Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Winner, neurologist and sleep specialist. Hey, I'm Toki Monster, and I'm a music producer and a live performance DJ. Tell me about your relationship with sleep. And what I'm really interested in is how does that relationship change when you're out performing, producing, you know, on the road? I grew up thinking that sleep was my favorite hobby and I do love it a lot. I do find that when I travel a lot, it becomes very difficult to sleep. It is, um, you know, DJing at clubs late at night, maybe sometimes two, three, four in the morning if it's in Europe, trying to get a flight at seven o'clock, and I develop these sleep patterns where I'm just trying to get naps in and never feeling fully rested. On the other hand, when I'm not on tour and I'm back at home, I'm able to set a schedule, when I'm in music making mode, so like producing, making tracks, I get to create um, a schedule that's more on my terms. So it varies. When you're on the road, what does that look like? Is it sort of a one-off, I fly here, I have a crazy schedule and I'm back? Or is it more like a, a tour? I'm city to city to city to city kind of situation. And then I stop go back home, sort of lick my wounds, go back in the studio, have my schedule. What does that look like? And, and if you're on the road, how long are you on that sort of fragmented schedule? Oh, well, it also depends. So I do go on one-off dates and I do have full-on tours. So, you know, for example, in the US, it's easy for me to be like, okay, I'm gonna fly out to Salt Lake City and then I'm gonna fly out to uh, Vegas and then come home. Those two days I'm away, I don't sleep very well. I think a lot of it is also adrenaline, making sure. it difficult to sleep at night. But then it's the most difficult when I do these full on tours. So I'll go to Europe during the summer for a month, month and a half. It is back to back shows in areas and countries where performances are very, very late. And I still need to play a show in another country the next day. So I have to leave very early for the flights. I have to still go through customs and all these things. So it's kind of both, but in both scenarios, I don't sleep well, but at least when I do these one-off dates, I know when I come back, I can recharge during the week. So I have a little bit more stamina during the weekends, but doing the heavy touring can be very, very difficult on my general well-being, my resilience, and sometimes even my mental health. What do you see from a performance perspective? You know, how do you measure your performance as an artist and what do you see are the subtle changes, maybe things that other people wouldn't see that you see or feel when you're not getting good sleep? For me, performing is very interactive. I'm not standing there. You're moving around doing cardio for like an hour and a half. You know, I think generally it's recommended you're not supposed to really exercise hard right before sleep, but that's basically what I'm doing and not because I have to. Uh, I mean, I want to, but also the sleep part is kind of the sacrifice I make for that. I work with a lot of professional athletes and as I sit here and talk to you and I find your your your, your life fascinating, it, it seems very similar to that of a professional athlete. You've mm -hmm. got your in-season, out-season, and when you're in-season, everything's happening in that sort of prime time, late night, under the lights, crowds, tons of adrenaline and excitement. You know, I, I, I used to write articles talking to bands about what their lives were like from the time the show ended until the next one began. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fascinating, you know, having to get yourself to the next venue and how much stuff is happening in the evening all at the time when your body's wanting sleep and trying to wind down. I mean, when you have these little pockets of time to sleep, mm -hmm. what are your tricks for making that two hour hotel nap or that two hours sleep between your show ending and when you have to get your car to the airport to go to the next show. What are your keys for making that two hours as good as it can be? Depending on where my mind's at, if I'm really nervous, for example, or if something's happening, it's hard to shut that brain off, but I do the best I can with breathing exercises, just mindfulness, things I can do to like kind of quiet that mind. Yeah but it's very difficult. And it's something I'm cognizant of now and skills that I've learned over the past few years, but sometimes it's really hard to quiet the mind. You know, it's interesting hearing you talk just about the role that sleep plays in your life from a schedule and recovery perspective. I'm, I'm curious, does that ever translate over into the inspiration of the actual music 
you put out there, you know, the, 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 the role of rest and quiet times in your life and how does that manifest itself in your work? It's actually a very uh, strong theme throughout all the music that I make and all the albums and projects. Everything has to do with the quiet and peace that you get at night. And I think that's why I'm such a late night person because only you're awake, the distractions are gone, you get to sit with your thoughts and... It's magical, isn't it? It's, it's I'm pretty a, amazing. I'm a, I'm a night person too, and yeah. I just find that things happening at night just have a special character to them, you know, when 100%. you're out at night and you, know, you see other people are out at night, there's always this kind of feeling of, what are they up to at three o'clock in the morning? So that's interesting that that kind of permeates your music. Tell me more about that. Yeah, it's, it's something that was always I mean, it was just behaviorally. I was, I've was i always been a late night person and I noticed that when I would work on music at night, the music had a very specific quality, but also I felt so much more of that inspiration at night. I didn't make music in the daytime until a bit more, a bit more recently, but in my early years making music, I only exclusively made music at night until I realized that perhaps it doesn't have to be at night because I realized I was sacrificing so much sleep and the quality of sleep, obviously, sun starts coming in, it's not super awesome. I'm a blackout curtain kind of gal, but I started trying to keep that feeling and energy and vibe, but also by working in the daytime. But regardless, I still notice like music that I make late at night, it has a, a very dreamy quality. It's almost like I should be asleep, but that creative mind is going and I'm able to impart that on music that really makes sense. Like if I played you a song and I said I made this at two in the morning, you'd be like, I can totally hear that. How do you judge awesome sleep or bad sleep? Do you wake up a lot during the night? Do you feel, is it based upon the way you feel the next morning? How do you judge success when it comes to your sleep? You know, I guess a lot of it is feeling rested because there are moments where I push it and I just feel worse. You know, where I think, I'm gonna let myself sleep in today because I missed all the sleep this past weekend and sleeping extra just gives me that feeling of, I guess they, they call it being like sleep drunk where mm -hmm. I'm just Absolutely. completely like discombobulated and don't have that much energy or focus. And so for me, the precise amount of sleep is actually important. If it's too much, I don't feel good. If it's too little, I, I don't feel good and also sleep affects my migraines for me. So if I oversleep, mm. I get migraines and I undersleep, I also get migraines. And it's interesting too, when you look at your career and what you've built, which is really quite phenomenal, it's important for individuals, biological rhythms to match their job. Does it really make sense for you to be a morning person? Like why, how would that give you an advantage in terms of a life where you're going to be flying to you know, Paris and headlining some massive show that is going to happen at night. I've mm -hmm. never been to a really exciting music festival that started at eight o'clock in the morning. Like, does, does, is that even a thing? And so to me, I, I look at your schedule and think, yeah, there's some things we could probably improve upon. But this idea that you feel creative and inspired and want to be awake at night would seem to mesh very well with some of the things that, that you're doing. And we know that people who are night oriented tend to deal with crazy travel much better than people who are much more set in morning ways. Interesting, yeah, this is really fascinating because I do think that my very long existing kind of um, affinity towards night definitely works with the kind of work that I do and I don't know what I would do if I was a very early person and I had to go and you know DJ or perform at one, two in the morning. I think it would be pretty, pretty tough. But for me, I would prefer that as long as I could sleep in more. You know, and I think the problem with touring is I get to do the staying up late part, but I don't get to do the sleeping in part, and that's where it becomes a little bit more problematic for me sometimes. You know, I think for you, you have a tremendous amount of awareness of yourself, of your sleep. And there's sort of the you where you are now and the ideally sleeping you. I mean, I think the key for you is just making those small adjustments, you know, making sure that when you have the choice between this thing and 20 minutes of time where you could sleep or even rest, mm -hmm. that you're making those choices on a consistent basis. You know, we always tell our athletes, you are now sleep camels. Every time you come across water, you drink it because there'll be stretches where you don't have it. 
And you want to be that way about your sleep and rest, it's I think. It's amazing. I'm going to call myself a sleep camel now. Sleep camel. I, that's my yeah, favorite takeaway from this the conversation. First time I said that to a group of basketball players. I said, you all are sleep camels. And then I kind of explained it. And you could just tell by their looks like, the analogy didn't quite land as effectively oh, as maybe it. with you. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're a sleep camel. Yeah, I, I like that. So that's great. I'm gonna store as much sleep as I can. Store it up. <laughs>